Hi, this is Andres. Today I want to show you the key differences between the two flavors we have in Power Apps, Model Driven and Canvas Applications. To do so, I will illustrate the use case with the creation of an invoice. We will input the invoice details and create a PDF based on a Microsoft Word template. Let's create an invoice using the Model Driven application first. We will use this basic form I've created uh, where we can submit the basic data with the customer and an invoice date. And you can see here the tax withholding. This is only relevant for uh, physical people, we say in Spain, uh, freelancers, contractors. Uh, you put there the, the tax withholding information, it's mandatory. Uh, and this illustrates how you can show and hide fields automatically in a model driven application very easily now let's create some items for this invoice we just need to submit the description uh, the amount to charge the discount percentage and select the bat uh, in spin again we have different bats i don't know how it's in your country but it's possible to have different and select them and you can see here that when we submit it the discount amount the bat amount and the total is automatically calculated. And now, finally, let's create the PDF, hitting the button, and when it uh, finishes, it's uh, in the background uh, calling this Power Automate flow that will populate this Microsoft Word template with the invoice information. And now, here we go, we click and access the information, the PDF, which is in SharePoint. There you can see the PDF already and that's that. Now let's do the same operation but using the Canvas application which you can see right in the beginning that the layout is completely different and that's the beauty of Canvas we can create whatever layout we want and here we basically I, can, I show you how to filter and we have the invoices in the left and the invoice details for the selected or a new invoice in the right and basically what we do is create a new invoice and just fill the details like in the previous example but in a much faster uh, pace because I have created this gallery as an uh, editable grid so that we can go using the tab key in the keyboard uh, fill by fill uh, filling the inputs very easily now let's create the PDF and the experience is pretty much the same we uh, hit the button and in the background the same Power Automate workflow is running which is going to grab the Word template, fill it with the invoice data, the invoice information and now that's finished we just uh, hit the link and jump into the PDF which is uh, again in SharePoint just like in the previous example. The two applications I just showed you are basically the same application. The only difference is that one is made as a Canvas application and the other one as a model driven application. And I want to discuss with you the key differences between the two approaches. Starting with the Canvas approach, well, it's clear that that's the one that gives you the most flexibility in terms of user interface and user experience. We actually like to say that Canvas apps are kind of a mixture between PowerPoint and Excel because with PowerPoint you can build any slide in the way that you want, <clears throat> just drawing your shapes there and then use Excel-like formulas because Power Apps formulas, they are called Power Effects. They are very similar to what you may find in Excel. So with those two tools in one, which is the Canvas um, maker experience, the editor, you can build the application the way you want it to be. And with great power comes great responsibility, right? So as cons of the Canvas app approach versus the model-driven app approach, we have that first, while it's slower development than the model-driven app, and take this with a grain of salt because we are talking still of low code, no code. That means that still it's going to be much faster than developing with a pro code approach like with React or any other kind of a front-end approach. So aside from the development speed consideration, we need to ensure that we put some uh, quality assurance checks when we develop Canvas applications that are not there when we develop with a model-driven app approach. And of course, what we 
all have been there. I've made these mistakes myself in the past, but uh, you need to take these into account. And I can uh, give you a couple of examples that are very common, that uh, are mistakes that beginners make in their first Canvas applications. Number one being placing the logic far from the data source. And there's a, as a clear example when we saw how the amount, the subtotal, the VAT amount, the discount are calculated in the Canvas application example. Well, I'm not doing that from the front end. I'm not doing that with formulas. I'm doing that in the back end that's near the uh, data source itself with, in this case, or Power Automate uh, cloud flows or uh, uh, plugins or maybe with an old school dynamics uh, flavor um, uh, workflow, for example. And the reason is that, well, now imagine that you want to allow uh, another maker to create invoices via uh, Teams Power Virtual Agent application, or you want to enable the creation of invoices from an external uh, software like an ERP or an integration with a third party application. Well, you don't want them to be thinking about, okay, how does these guys calculate the discount and the VAT amount and the subtotal and the total uh, of the inverse, etc. You don't want that because uh, there may be additional logic in place that you, that you can only know yourself or back when you develop that. So we want to put all those calculations or those business rules the nearest you can to the data source. And that's, let's say, the back end. That's what we call the back end. And that's very important in order to avoid uh, these problems. And this is what we call a highly decoupled system. We want to decouple things so that when you create an application, you don't need to think on what's happening in the back end because it's already uh, been built uh, for you. And number two, keep in mind always when you design your Canvas application, the let's say the full picture. Easy example is uh, multilingual support for your application, for example. Uh, if you don't take that into account at first, then you will have uh, quite a lot of work to change all the labels and the notification messages and so on, because you didn't think about that in the beginning, and then you may go rushing, uh, providing the uh, translations with an Excel or something, and then it's going to uh, bite you in the ass with ALM. So be sure to understand the full picture of the application before starting working on that. Now for the model-driven app approach, well, it's clearly the fastest way to provide an application that allows the user to read data and interact with it in a sense of creating and updating records. Also, the logic is enforced to be placed, let's say by design, nearer to the data source than when you develop a Canvas application. And that's the reason you have things like business rules when creating a form for your table in model driven apps. Then also you need to bear in mind that if you have work with Dynamics, uh, you will find that a model driven app is very similar to it. And that's because they are using the same technology basically. So we are uh, having the same robustness that we have in Dynamics, that's an ERP system, an enterprise grade level system, when we develop a, a custom tiny or not so tiny model driven application. Now, what are the cons then is the flexibility. We have to trade things off, right? So we don't have, we cannot have everything. Well, we'll see. And, but when we select the model driven app approach, if you want, you want to create a more uh, customized user experience then you will need to create PCF controls and custom pages and things like that. Now, things are getting, the gaps are getting narrower and narrower. Uh, they have been doing so and they get uh, they will get more uh, narrow in the following months and years because with model controls, Fluent UI 2 and all these steps Microsoft is performing towards a more unified model where it's starting to get more uh, difficult to see if this is just model driven application or model driven application and canvas application or, or a pure canvas application. We'll see where this goes but Right now, my recommendation would be to go for a model driven app uh, first approach and create custom pages, which are nothing more than 
uh, Canvas apps embed into the Moldriven app. And you can uh, think of, of an example when I was creating the uh, PDF from the Mobile Driven application. That's a, a custom page that's popping up and allowing you to see the spinner loading and click to see the PDF, right? So these kind of approaches will make enable you to create very fast an application your users can interact to, uh, interact with, and provide these custom uh, pages, these canvas applications for those edge scenarios where you need these um, very customized, personalized uh, uh, user experience to provide the greatest value to your customer. I hope this explanation was useful for you. And please let me know in the comments if you want me to create a step-by-step -step guide on how to build the model driven approach or the canvas approach or compare uh, the two of them together in a video. I will be uh, glad to do that if you ask me in the comments or any other uh, questions you may have. Cheers.